So this is an exciting panel for me. Um, I mentioned earlier that I've, I've sort of become a hybrid investor because I started investing here in Silicon Valley. Most of my career has been here in California. And then now moved to the Middle East to continue doing the investing over there in uh, Middle Eastern startups. And my panelists are also sort of a mix of, of different things. You lived and worked in the US, some of you. You're investing in the US, Tarek. Uh, now that you're here on the secondment uh, with WEF, so I think this is going to be an interesting perspective. Now, we realize that, um, thanks to the insight from my panelists, most of you are more familiar with the ecosystem and landscapes here. Uh, but hopefully, this will be uh, some insight into what's happening in the markets over there. They are maturing and growing very quickly. Um, but there's still a gap or sort of a difference, as, in, as it is in many emerging markets around the world where startups and VC is growing. It's not growing in the exact same way the last 30, 40 years here in the US has grown. So I want to highlight maybe some of your perspectives on what those differences is, are. And uh, say, for, for example, let me introduce my panelists. So Nada uh, and Saeed coming from Bahrain Economic Development Board, uh, which we now have a very close relationship with from uh, 500 Startups and Tekwadi, and uh, on secondment here in San Francisco with uh, World Economic Forum, working on the fourth industrial revolution team, right? Um, so. She, the, the Bahrain Economic Development Board just launched the Waha Fund, which is a fund of funds uh, investing in other VC funds and also doing programs and investing in other ecosystem development. Like, very much at the forefront, because I've been there for a little bit, uh, that they just had a vision, executed on the vision, launched, deployed, while everyone else is still thinking on the whiteboard. So we've had amazing experience uh, with the way that you guys are working. So that you bring a perspective that's say public versus a private, uh, although you've, you've involved private sector as well in what you're doing and continue to do so, gone on delegations, the team has gone on delegations to China through thought, uh, exchanges, um, and now we have a Chinese delegation coming to Bahrain. So these are really exciting things, but you stand in a corner of, um, of where the ecosystem components are to build uh, what is the government's role in. So I want to hear some of your perspective on that. And now that you have perspective as well coming from this side, what are the differences? And where do we need to, to maybe do the same things? And where, where are we going to do different things in, a, in, a, in our region in the Middle East? Heba uh, also sort of ha has perspective from here, but um, now working at Egypt Ventures as a managing partner. Egypt Ventures is a, a venture capital fund launched by uh, the Ministry of Investment. Uh, she's also vice chair of uh, uh, Felix Startups, which is an incubator uh, subsidiary of uh, the, this initiative. Um, so she's, she's on the ground investing with me. We're, we're doing uh, seed and, and Series A startup investments. We're also, they're doing uh, incubation of startups that are even earlier than that. So really seeing on the ground what's happening, uh, but has perspective from before from, from US and other places. So I want to get your perspective on the private public difference, how you guys, as you were charting out the, the, the role of the fund, how, where you saw your role going to be in Egypt in developing the ecosystem versus the private VCs. Uh, and for Tarek, Tarek has a very interesting perspective as well as a cross-border venture capital fund. About half of your investments are in the Middle East or Europe, and the other half are here in the US. Um, and that's given Tarek, uh, I think, um, an interesting uh, network of, of other investors he's co-investing with. So in some of your deals, you're, you're dealing purely with local regional investors. In other deals, you're dealing with the top 20 investors here. So I want to hear uh, your perspective on the differences there. Uh, so let's jump in. Just setting the stage. The, the, the MENA ecosystem is not uh, at the infancy stages anymore. So it's, it's still very complex. It still has lots of challenges. Uh, but we now have 150 investors, institutional investors, in the Middle East. Some are corporate. Some are, are public sector, uh, government funded. And, and many others are private and family offices. So it, it's moving very quickly. And it's breaking along the way as it moves. And we're learning. And as 500 startups, we're, we come in at the seed level. So we're trying to instill best practices and documents and terms. and not overstructuring deals early, uh, but, but it's a wild east, right? So uh, let's, let's start with that. Given that, uh, that sort of landscape or background, Tarek, why don't we start with you? Um, what, is this, what are the starkest differences you've noticed uh, investing with groups here versus investing in the Middle East? Yeah, there are a lot of differences, like, but basically uh, what stands out is the uh, 
terms, actually. <laughs> when, you, when you start, uh, uh, when you're investing in Middle East, basically at early stage, we are an early stage fund as well, uh, you start hearing very strange terms coming from Middle Eastern investors asking for full ratchet and asking for uh, uh, like super parata terms and, and things, it's hilarious terms even to be asked at, at, at Series A here in the, in, in, in the Bay Area, for example. But the insist in doing it, I don't know why, uh, but I, I, I totally believe that startups, although it is, startups from the Middle East are not in, at the infancy real stage anymore, but I think they are far progressing than the funds. Mm -hmm. Funds are still at the infancy stage. Mm -hmm. While in here, no, actually, you, we, you go and, and, and you do like a seed round, sometimes they call it like a party round or something. You have a lot of people working together, especially at seed stage. While back in the, back in the Middle East, it's it started to change. We, we we do a lot of deals together, you and us, and, and, and with Heba and some of those deals. But but till now it's not there. You don't go and you have like five or four people coming together and investing that easy. Still, it's a new thing, and people would find it really difficult to work with each other. I, I used to joke before. I said like it's just an an ecosystem, not an ecosystem, but uh, <laughs> ecosystem. It's, it's an ecosystem, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it's, 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 it's changing, I hope, and entrepreneurs actually are teaching us all what can we do and how we can do a better job in what we're doing. I mean, are we doing the, the founders a disservice? Uh, because they seem to be trailblazing, they're, they're working on their business, and everything around them seems to be an obstacle. Yes. And they don't know terms, and they don't know these things. So you, you mentioned terms. I think it's interesting because price and terms, price and control are, are what you negotiate, right? Yeah, of course. And everyone talks about price, and so the investors there get very creative, and they say, okay, fine, you want price, take price, we're gonna control everything, and you don't understand what it means. Yeah, and it's full of tricks, like some people, even when, I, I do remember one deal, we've done it like two, two years ago, it was a very well-known VC, but they had, uh, like, I think, uh, a double dip, like where, where actually they were basically, uh, the, it's not a typical thing to, to have a double dip and, and you see the investment when even when the, uh, when the founder asked, please, would you explain to me what this term is? They didn't explain it in a clear way. Mm. So I, I, I told them, go and ask for a written example with numbers and calculations. And when they did so, they figure out that, yes, it is not, you, like, you, it's, it's, a, it's a preferred participation double mm -hmm. at that time. And surprisingly, later on, people saying this is now the common term, in a way, in the Middle East, which is crazy for seed. Uh, let's go move on to Heba, we'll just move down the line at first. But uh, Heba, what, what is your perspective on um, the work you guys are doing at Egypt Ventures? Um, how are you looking at it? Are you trying to emulate any particular model, or are you looking at the ground in front of you and saying, this is what we need to build? Yeah, I don't think we can emulate. I think we can learn and we have to continue because not only is the ecosystem, as you know, it's changing so rapidly in the Middle East, but it's also changing globally. So we can't be emulating something that's not really going to exist in a couple of years um, and doesn't really apply to the local problems. So when Tore was saying, you, know, you were saying right now about um, why do VCs put those constraints or put those terms and we don't know why? I think a lot of it because although there is money that is going to high risk venture capital, um, it still has the private equity mindset and they want the upside of, um, of a venture capital but they are not really familiar with the terms and what it takes to actually scale those companies. Um, they've been preaching, I mean, as an ecosystem, we're learning to accept failure for startups, but on the other hand, we need to accept that as investors as well. Um, so it's not really, it's, it's a matter of learning and relearning. As Egypt Ventures, we're, we're a multi-stage fund, and I can say that the biggest difference between, because you wanted to highlight that, is that our anchor investors are the Saudi Fund for Development and the um, Ministry of Investment and International Cooperation. So we have um, institutional investors. Um, we invest indirectly uh, through our accelerator, through Flat Six Labs, in, um, in, at the pre-seed and seed level. And we also do more late, later stage investments at the Series A and pre-Series A. 
You were involved, I mean, at the formation of, of Egypt Ventures, yes. right? Yes. So, um, was tell us about the experience of, of convincing the LPs. Who, yeah, the stakeholders to, to launch this fund and the thesis for the fund. So this is not the first time um, public money has been put in terms of like supporting entrepreneurship. But this is the first time it's been put into into a fund. Um, the Ministry of um, Information Technology has been doing this for a decade, and they've done amazing work, but in ter very very different scope. They've working on grant focus, mm -hmm. and they're working on SMEs mostly in the Ministry of Trade and Industry. This is completely different. And the mindset was, okay, we're, we need um, to first recognize that what startups are not SMEs and should not be treated as SMEs. The, those programs are not fitting anymore. And, um, and we need to separate that. So if you're gonna allocate resources and it's, they're being allocated anyway, you might as well do it right. And publicly fund and privately manage was the thing that we had to emphasize on early before even structuring the fund. Um, so Are you guys return focused, mission yes. focused, impact? Return focused, yeah. <laughs> I think I, we're all here. We're all return focused, um, and de definitely impact focused. Um, but yeah. Great, Nada. Tell us a little bit about uh, your the fund, uh, the fund of funds, and the work that you're doing. You're working on a sort of different side of the of the firm. Tell us a little bit about that. And well, I think um, I come from a a slightly different um, background, uh, given that I work in uh, public policy. So my background essentially is economic planning and, and public policy. So my take on that is a little bit looking at it from uh, the policy perspective. Um, and particularly in, in my organization, uh, what I do is I work very closely with the government stakeholders and the industry to, to enhance the investment climate and, of course, startups. The startup climate is a big priority for us, as it is a big priority to every other nation in, 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 in the MENA region. Um, everyone is doing um, amazing stuff. Uh, but um, I think that just like every other nation, uh, we do have high aspir aspirations, and we found that um, the MENA region in, in general, we, we are late adopters and, and uh, we, we are in, in some way playing catch up. So there's a heavy um, push from governments to, to, um, to do a lot more in order not to just close the gap, but also to um, kind of uh, be uh, uh, transcend that and, 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 and uh, be ahead of the game. So we're seeing uh, that um, uh, there's a, a lot of initiatives from, from the governments, uh, whether it's uh, in Bahrain or whether it's in Egypt or whether it's in Jordan and, and the UAE and Saudi, regardless of, of, of your economic situation, uh, everyone is, is rallying behind um, uh, the tech scene. And, and I could give you an example of, of Bahrain. It um, really, it's, it's, it, it, it really was a, a mission that's been driven by leaders at, at, at the very top, and, and, and it became a, a collective effort by, by all of the governments and something that uh, we like to say Team Bahrain, and it's not just government, but it's also um, uh, public sector, uh, private sector players, and and it's um, and, and the outcome of it was was a series of, of initiatives and reforms um, driven by the government. Um, and over the past three years, actually, we've seen over a dozen initiatives led by the government, which is quite astonishing in, in, in my opinion, and, and I'm not going to dwell too much. I think David uh, covered it um, quite well um, when it comes to all of the regulatory changes, all of the um, initiatives from the um, funding side of things, um, making the, it easier for startups to, to grow and, 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 and to scale um, from Bahrain and across, across the, the region. So there's a lot that's been done, and I think that um, uh, it's, the MENA region is, is quite unique. You, you, you find, um, so it's a lot different than, than, than the, the, the market here in the US. Um, the, you see that the governments are, are a lot more active and it's probably a, 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 it's the same trend that we see in, in other emerging markets, but something that I wanna link it back to 
uh, the lovely talk that Professor Maria gave is that the role of the government in, in this situation is, is to lend a helping hand rather than a, a grabbing hand. So this is something that all of the, um, well, something that we are trying to do in, in, in Bahrain as much as we can uh, to um, support the ecosystem um, uh, without pushing too much. And it's a, it's a fine balance. And I think that other governments um, are trying to also to transition from, uh, from, from those two models. Um, so yeah, so this is what we've been doing. And, and, and the VC Fund of Fund, is Waha Fund of Fund, was one of the initiatives. And the main objective of that initiative was, was to improve the VC Fund landscape in, in the MENA region because um, if you look at, if you compare us to other, other regions, and you'll see that it's, it's somewhat underdeveloped. So one of the objectives of, of the fund was not just to deploy um, $100 million in, 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 in different global funds, but to, uh, as a requirement, was to get those funds to set up in, in some way in the region and to invest not just in Bahrain, but in, in, region -wide. The, whole, in the whole region. So um, we do feel that it's a step to, to kind of attract different players to the region. So it's not just the story of Bahrain, but the story of I've, I've, I've been very impressed over the last two years at the speed and the, the soundness of the strategy that Bahrain has come out with. It's an example for the rest of the region, maybe not the first to, to sort of announce and start to do it, but work very quickly and everything just to seem to make sense. Uh, yeah. that the, the, like you said, we're not just Bahrain only. We know it's going to help Bahrain. Um, and to, to just be from the beginning, say, you know what, we're going to be global or regional. Um, and to think of it as a fund-to-fund strategy, because we have these conversations a lot with LPs in the region, uh, fund-to-funds, or should you be doing direct, or should government be owning equity, like all these conversations, right? But like just the steps, and I think it's the people you guys have in the team and surrounded by, um, have just been making, it seems like, right decisions uh, you know, over and over again. And there's a real sense of urgency here. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's easy to talk and plan and put strategies together, but it's, it really doesn't matter. What matters is what you actually do on the ground. And, and, and it's, it's urgency that kind of, it's pushed from the leaders and it trickles down to, to everybody in, 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 in that team. Well, you guys are a shining example now that we, we share with the other governments uh, who are asking what they should be doing. So thank you guys for all the work that you guys are doing. Um, Heba, I, you and I have been in conversations talking about certain deals to do, um, f sharing frustrations even about, like Tarek mentioned, some of the inv other investors in the picture, or maybe have invested in the startups before we came into the picture. Um, what are some of the challenges like really irking you uh, that you don't think would happen here? Um, I mean, when you go in and the cap table is completely messed up, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the biggest thing. I think we, fi we find that um, 39 shareholders in one company, yeah, <laughs> lots of cleaning up. Um, but at the same time, it's, I think it's changing. Um, this is one of the main things, and it's not because, um, it's because simply, like, they didn't know, and this is, they were the just founders, raised. The, the founders, founders didn't, didn't know. know. The investors didn't know. And then they realized, okay, they're onto something, and it just doesn't work yeah. that way. Um, but I think the learning curve of the entrepreneurs is really like, you know, is 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 really um, accelerating. And not only that, but they share their experiences. And I think this is one of the most important things, whether as investors or as founders, they're starting to share all those experiences that they've had in terms of um, either startups that they've closed or uh, previous rounds or previous investors. So this is setting the standards and the bar pretty um, higher than what we've had before. So I don't think those mistakes are going to be happening um, as frequently or as you know, as, as, as big as they were, to be honest. But are, you guys, are you guys, um, you know, do you have playbooks that you try to teach at Felic, let's say, or um, with all the founders that you talk to, are there standards and best practices that you're trying to spread? I know for us, uh, we've done uh, about 100, it'll be 125 deals tomorrow uh, in the region. 
um, and it's starting to change the tide just by sheer number of deals we're going into, yeah. coming in with convertible notes, ESOPs, uh, just trying to set, you know, tell the founder first, these are the standards, these are what they do, and then eventually with co-investors that we're investing with, try to convince them to come on the other side of the fence. Um, it seems to be working, but every day, again, we feel challenges, uh, and we meet founders, 50% of the equity gone at pre-seed or something. Yeah. Um, what are you guys doing in Egypt in, in particular? To, to I mean, one of the things is that we always prefer to co-invest. So, like, most of the deals, if, even if we do, um, if we lead around, it's to kick it off so that others can join and, and kick it off faster. But I think one of the best things to do is, is we have very few investors, at least in Egypt. Um, there there tends to be a notion of there's a lot of capital but not enough startups. I think if you look at... Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's not true. Um, that's not true at all. Um, so we need to syndicate more deals and we need to be transparent about those terms um, together. Um, one of the things is that we use your note. <laughs> we use the... like so. Let's standardize things, and especially if you're going in at a really early stage, let's simplify it as much as possible. Um, and not put the terms of a Series B or a Series C round um, yeah. on private a company equity. that, yeah, yeah exactly, and private equity. Yeah. Uh, so this is, get out of the private equity mindset. It's not working. It's, uh, it hasn't been working for private equity. It's not gonna work for venture capital. So we need to move past that, and I think the mind, like the, the mind shift is happening. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's really great. I mean, of the 150 or so investors, I think probably 30 to 40 are new seed funds that were not funds when we all started investing. And so they've, they're sort of learning and, and piggybacking off the work that we're doing, using our notes as well, or even Y Combinator's safe note. This has become surprising to maybe some of you guys, has become common practice now. Uh, thank God, like, so we're at least part, partly there. Um, there's still regulatory issues. A lot of the local jurisdictions, and my partner Hassan's from Bahrain, so we've talked about maybe Bahrain can become the BVI of the Middle East or the Delaware of the Middle East. We have this problem in the Middle East where we can't invest directly in almost any of the jurisdictions because they don't honor convertible notes, ESOPs, uh, so many other things that startups need in the early days to protect the founders and to protect the investors de facto, because if you don't, you get bankers, private equity folks coming in and saying, well, I know how to protect myself. Here's a 100-page document to do the deal. Um, and that's just going to kill the deals, right? So let's move to the sort of solution side of thinking. Tarek, let's talk about what have you seen that works so well, and you think well, maybe we can start to do some more of that in the Middle East? I mean, you worked with some of the top VCs here. Yeah. Um. I think um, a lot of thinking, like first, as you just said, we, we're using your terms on why Combinator safe document. So basically, they're setting the standard of an early stage investment, this is one. Second, we are learning more, more and more about how actually we can like, build a company and how we can actually, like, for example, we, we invested with Greylock Partner with, uh, in an early stage company, so I'm, I'm getting all the... Uh, KPIs and matrices that actually Greylock is looking at the company with, and I'm using now with any marketplace that we are investing in. So we, we're trying oh, nice. to learn from them what kind of KPI that we should be looking at when mm -hmm. we look at our companies. And we're trying to share this knowledge with everybody, not only our portfolio company, as much as we can by, by writing, by writing blogs, by actually inviting people to some events and talking about. So this is from one side. Second. Uh, I think what's happening now more is actually something that's really good from the Middle East that's not happening as often from he in here, which basically most of the Silicon Valley investors are Silicon Valley investors. Again, when, when you are in San Francisco, you invest in your neighborhood. You don't, you, some, you don't even invest in New York. You, mm -hmm. like, you don't go there. Uh, but for us, uh, in the Middle East, by nature, at the very beginning, we are cross-border investors. Because for us, even if you manage to, to get some, some money for the early stage deals, 
when you go to at the later stages, for like example, for Series C and D and things like that, you need to go and help them raise money from people in here or from funds in here. So being a cross-border investor from early beginning and encouraging your startups actually how to build something that's global by nature from day one, things like that, this is something that we had to learn by necessity and it's working really well for, for the portfolio company. The concept of being a cross-border, this is something that unique in a way that ha we had to do it part of our region because it's, we didn't have enough money for later stages. And it's working really well. At the, like for, for example, the, uh, like, w you, you know, we're an investor early on in Karim, we're one of the early investors in Karim. So basically, when they tried to raise their, their, uh, their series, um, I think their series D round, it was mainly from people outside the region because mm -hmm. at that time nobody wanted to put hundreds of millions of dollars into Karim. But now, actually, the latest round, $200 million, coming completely from the region. Mm -hmm. So this actually, how are we getting there? So this is from one side. And the other side, the, uh, our second unicorn is here from out of the US. And how we got into this at early stage, we got into this because we got them customer in the Middle East. So basically, being a cross-border is a thing, which, again, this is something that's not a Silicon Valley-based thing. Mm -hmm. It is emerging market thing. Being a cross-border is our thing. That's excellent. That's going to lead me into sort of the last topic I want to talk to you guys about are, you know, emerging markets, yeah, maybe they started later than Silicon Valley, but what, what that does, and it does this for founders as well, which is allows them to leapfrog technology. So I don't have to have a desktop before I go to a laptop or, uh, you know, and uh, we see that in China, we see that in India, all over Asia, um, now starting to even happen in the Middle East where founders are on smartphones, uh, they, they read everything that we read here. What are... Uh, to Tarek's point, uh, what are some of the areas where you think actually, you know, in the midst of what, what's being discussed here is VC disruption or transformation, what are the things we have an advantage over there? Because we have resources perhaps that the VC community here when it started didn't have. It's going through changes and globalization is happening. What are some of the things that we can, we can leapfrog uh, from in the VC community or investing community in the Middle East? 